Hello, my name is Uwe Steinkraus. I'm with company Unified Automation. We are doing software development kits for OPC UA to integrate OPC UA technology into devices, into systems, into existing software. Today I want to talk about the OPC UA security, the transport and the application layer security. Uh, this is part three of a series of five presentations and to start, I want to explain why security is so much important. OPC UA technology is now used into different levels of the industry, from the field level through the application level and uh, through the process control level, also up to the enterprise systems and even to the edge or edge cloud or to the internet, to the cloud communication. For all this, you can use OPC UA, and of course, because of that, you uh, have strong demands on security on the communication. And uh, OPC UA has a defense in depth concept inside uh, all the different layers of the architecture. Um, of course, OPC UA has to be integrated in a large concept, even you will need firewalls and uh, demilitarized zones and all the other concepts that you still need to establish in your factory. And another requirement also are uh, regulations, maybe from the government, uh, that force you to implement security inside any critical infrastructure to protect against cyber attacks. The built-in security concept of OPC uh, can be grouped into two major parts. One is the transport layer security and the other the application layer security. And within each group we have different mechanisms to protect the information. Of course for the transport um, and for the message uh, we have uh, encryption and signing uh, to um, ensure the integrity of the information, but also to protect against reading by others. Then we have an access protection down on the node level. So every single node inside the OPC information space has an access right for read, for write, for being visible, for being executable. Um, so we also can authenticate the users and identify them and find out, okay, this is a guest only allowed to read, this is an administrator allowed to write, this is an operator, so role-based permissions. And in addition, there's an auditing system built into OPC UA. So any changes, any modifications in the security of nodes is audited and the server is recording this information so that we can find out what happened and who changed what setting. The security of OPC is based on established standards, which is the AES and the RSA. We have uh, SHA algorithms and we even use elliptic curve cryptography. Um, we have different um, encryption depths, um, more than 256, and we have different lengths of the keys uh, starting from 2048. Uh, going up 4,000, um, depending on how much computing power there is in the device. For the client-server communication, um, we have a security concept that is based on security for the transport and security for the message. We use the commonly known PKI infrastructure uh, to exchange keys and we use asymmetric algorithms to do so, which is the RSA, uh, to exchange the sessions keys. So the client is sending an X509 certificate to the server, and the server is sending its own X509 certificate, and both the client side and the server side must trust each other's certificate, and then they have a trusted relationship and can build up uh, and secure communication channel. 
On top of that, we have the application layer security where we also need to identify the user sitting at this uh, system. So we have the ability to transport a user token and uh, the server can validate uh, the user, the user group or the role and then decide to allow him to access the data. Because the message of a publisher is sent only once and received by many subscribers, if we secure this information, then of course all the subscribers need to have the key to decrypt the message. And in the publish subscribe, we have the data set, which is the data that is published, and we group that. And this security groups have the same key. And now the subscriber need to obtain the key to decrypt the message. In this picture, you can see how we do this end-to-end -end security. So the publisher is sending the information, many subscribers receiving them, and in some cases, we even have a broker sitting in the middle. And of course, we want to route through encrypted information. And of course, the intermediate should not read the message. It should be end-to-end -end security. And for that, we have the security group and we have a key for that security group and the server can have this key inside this publisher server and uh, the, the subscriber need to read out the key. But also there is the possibility to have a separate key server where we can store all the keys so that all the subscriber can get it. And to do so, of course, we must have a directory and the server needs to register his keys there and uh, the subscriber needs to query which one is used for which one and then get the key from this central server. So both possible, a central server having the keys or the key is sitting inside the publisher and needs to be read out. The way to get the key, there we have already a mechanism which is client server to read out this key and then we can subscribe to the message. The security policies are used to describe the cryptographic algorithm, the signature algorithm and the key derivation algorithm. And this is described in one security policy. And an OPC UA server announces the security policies it supports for the different endpoints it offers to connect. And the client can read out these policies and then decide which one to use, typically the highest, of course, that is available, to connect and to encrypt the information. And for the publishers, we have the security policy that is then associated with the data set um, and the security group. And so um, the subscribers, of course, must use the same policy in order to understand the information. So at the moment, and this is the example of the transport uh, security policies for the transport, um, there's a URI uniquely defining um, and identifying a security policy. And there's the security policy none, which obviously is the lowest security. This typically should be disabled. Um, so it's only for the commissioning phase or for testing, but should not be used in production. Uh, then we have already two policies that were deprecated, the basic 128 RSA 15 uh, and the basic 256. Um, and as you can see, there are new policies. Some have uh, an average security. So for systems that have not enough computing power for very high security encryption and very long keys, uh, they can have the medium or average uh, security. And of course, we have very strong um, security keys for um, the high security need operations. So it depends on the use case, which one you want to use. In addition, for the user authorization, we have the token policies that describe how the user is identified. And also there we have for example, the anonymous, which is like everybody, 
uh, and so you have no user authorization in that respect. And we have user name and password um, for applications that are able to validate a username against the password. We also have the possibility of, again, X509 certificates, so user certificates, uh, and identify the user by that. Uh, we have issue token for, um, for example, for Kerberos tokens. Um, and we also have the, the Windows Kerberos um, token format that you can use. And we have the JSON web token, uh, which is required for OR2 authentications. Thank you very much for listening. This was a security presentation of the OPC UA technology.